All right, KMR, and we're back, and we're going to talk that rap. So, the quest for horsepower and rotary engines. I think this is a perfect example right here. I love this combination. I've ran this combination, but I don't think this combination is for everybody. We're going to talk about why I think it's great and what some of the downfalls are. So, um, as rotary engines have uh, strived for more and more performance, we've seen drag racers, road racers, drifters, upper end performance take the semi peripheral design. That's where you take a small peripheral hole right in through the water jacket, through the intake manifold, um, so you can bring in a lot of air, whether it's naturally aspirated or boost in a specific location so you're not as aggressive as a full peripheral or some large bridge ports um, so this does provide some good uh, flow characteristics and a certain amount of reliability since you're not cutting the water seal a lot of the times you're back filling that gallery with devcon which these are or in some cases even a cnc uh, aluminum filled pocket um, it's always important to manage intake flow and exhaust flow. You don't want an imbalance, so we get a nice big exhaust port to match this semi-peripheral, which also does have a small bridge. So this is kind of your popular combination right now for your 600 to 850 horsepower performance rotary. Or if you go in drag racing or trying to set some records, this could easily climb a 13B into 1,000 plus horsepower territory, depending on how it's done. Uh, despite what a lot of people want to do, you cannot put a small turbo on this combination. It's too much exhaust back pressure. So this is a big turbo combination. And that's why you see the big horsepower numbers and why these motors work from about 5,000 to 10,000 RPM and sometimes 10,000 RPM plus depending on what people are doing. And that can start to become an expensive proposition by the time you've got in lightweight rotors, you're probably trying to go high compression. You got ethanol, alcohol, methanol, some kind of uh, high octane, a lot of aggressive porting being done. That's a lot of service work. This is going to need to be a studded block. You've got to maintain that block tightness. You can't let these things flex and move around. Um, you know, so you're looking at a pretty aggressive build, fully studded block, but with that comes reliability and with that comes performance. If anybody's looking for semi-peripheral port work, bridge port work, exhaust porting, or even peripheral port work, we're happy to work with people on that. Um, there's infinite combinations, and that's why I think you do hear a lot of online discussion as to which port design provides better response, better horsepower, better bottom end. Um, I think in most cases, we can lump the semi-peripheral and most of your bridge ports in the same category, Five to 10,000 RPM, very aggressive. Obviously, a full peripheral is going to be even a little more aggressive, but you don't see a lot of those turbo applications unless you're getting into four rotors, five rotors, six rotors. Um, they balance out a little bit at that point, but on your 13Bs and three rotors, you see a lot more of the semi-peripheral port in high horsepower performance, and then you see more of the half bridge and street port in combinations where you need a little bit more drivability. Um, I thought this was a great example, um, you know, beautiful port work. We've got a really nice semi-peripheral here. We put in the little O-ring spots um, and they're DevCon filled, which is classic. Um, that's what Mazda Racing and uh, most of the IMSA guys have done for years. And same thing with drag racers. If anybody needs this kind of stuff uh, or has questions, feel free to reach out to KMR. Um, this thing's definitely gonna brap hard. Um, this to me for street driving is a little excessive. Um, even in drifting, um, you know, you start to get into at least with a 13 B having to really keep it high in the RPM. Um, I could see this combination though, working great for like a, a thousand plus to 1400 horsepower four rotor. Um, you know, or, or getting into even multi-rotor combinations. I think still my, my preferable uh, setup for most 13Bs and three rotors is street port half bridge because we maintain some of that bottom end. But I think it's amazing what uh, rotary performance has been able to do. Uh, you know, with this type of combination, I think we could easily uh, put a billet block behind this, uh, center bearing aftermarket shaft. You can take these things to 11,000 RPM and probably easily generate over a thousand horsepower. But that is basically at that point, 
the extreme end of what we're going to get with rotary performance. And that's not our day-to-day -day usage. I would say if you're trying to run pump gas or some type of high octane aftermarket ECU, you're going road racing, drifting, these are great 500 to 700 horsepower motors. I don't recommend dowel pinning. I'm still a fan of studding. So you can see these have been machined for studs all the way around. I think that's gonna provide better long-term support. And I'm all about that reliability. Um, I'd love to know what people think. I know there's a lot of these combinations out there. Um, you know, it's always fun to talk about this stuff and always fun to do the work. I think that's a wrap. Thanks for watching. Thanks for enjoying rotaries. Let us know what you want to see. That's some brap brap right there. That's going to make some noise. That's going to wake the neighbors. And it's going to make some horsepower.